the side of your brain that is freaking out, it wants absolute control. So it wants to memorize and it's stronger than everything else. So if you don't change your environment in a way where it doesn't have that opportunity, it's going to do it. That's why if I have a seven minute speech, I will almost never train seven minutes. Just like if I'm training for a marathon, I'm never going to run the 26.2 miles. I'm going to be running all kinds of different uh, lengths and distances. I'm going to be sprinting. I'm going to be running slow. It's the same idea. If, you're, if your speech is seven minutes, most of your practice should probably be around five minutes. But you don't, if you're only doing five minutes, then you're just recreating the same problem. So if you go from, I'm going to do one set that's five minutes, and I'm not, so this is the most important part. If you're playing this game, you can't break character. You can't stop midway and start again. You put your timer on, and it's as if you were in front of the audience. Regardless of what happens, you have to find a way to the end. Even if you stumble, even if you miss half of what you were supposed to say, even if you blank, you stay in it and you find a way to end as if that were the big day. Yeah. In doing so, you're, you're training your brain and you're training your whole being to find ways out of any struggle. And you're training in a dynamic, non-structured way which means that your your brain is not resting on a certain sequence of words for confidence. Your brain is going to naturally start resting on this idea, these, these key pillars and this one underlying message that you're trying to convey. So it's, it's like getting lost in the woods with a compass. Suddenly you have a compass and you have waypoints or a GPS and all you have to do is just pull it out of your pocket and you know exactly where you are and where you want to go. Yeah. That's what playing with time does. I, I, imagine you're, you're tasked with telling the story of the tortoise and the hare and you have five minutes. Well, then maybe you'd say, this is the story of the tortoise and the hare. And um, once upon a time, it was a beautiful sunny day and that the tortoise wakes up and has his coffee and then the hare approach and you get in all this rich detail, right? Okay. But then you play around and you only have 30 seconds and you're like, okay, this is the story of the tortoise and the hare. Basically, the hare challenges the tortoise. They all go to the, the start line and then boom, the tortoise takes off only to get so far ahead that it takes a nap. Maybe that was the hare. And then, and then all of a sudden, the tortoise comes from out of nowhere and wins because slow and steady wins the race. And you're like, oh man, 30 seconds. That was hard. That was tough. Oh, okay. Well, it turns out the sunny day with the cup of coffee didn't matter at all to the storyline. If I only have 30 seconds, I'm going to get the crux of it. And if you can get the crux of your story, the crux of your narrative, then it doesn't matter how many times you blank or fumble or which parts you forget. You always have that compass that Tristan's talking about. You always know where to go next. And if you don't simplify your presentation to that 30-second essence of I need to touch on this, 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 then you really don't have the clarity of knowing your roadmap. Mm -hmm. But now if you have 20 minutes to tell the, the story of the tortoise and the hare, you could go into all sorts of wonderful detail. You could make up details. You could go off script and compare it to other parables. You have so much freedom knowing that you can always come back to the main thread, the main storyline. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you.